Thank you. My next guest has had a remarkable career in show business. He is probably the only man we've ever had on this program who has worked with Jack Benny, Johnny Carson, and Bonzo. Currently, the executive producer of The Tonight Show. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Fred de Cordova. Hi, Fred. Nice to see you. How are you? Good morning. Nice to see you. Fred, thank you very much for being here. David, let me break in and say it's very warm in here. Yeah, I know, I know. Maybe if we rolled a fan into the studio, <laughs> things would cool right off. Um, let me ask you a question. Jack, we know about your uh, work with Johnny Carson, obviously, and I guess some people may know about Bonzo. This was the uh, bedtime for Bonzo with Ronald Reagan. It was Reagan. indeed. You, you directed that film. Indeed I did. Yeah. Uh, tell us about your work with Jack Benny. Well, there were nine absolutely wonderful years, parenthetically, David, and I want to say it's an enormous pleasure for me to be with the acknowledged king of extremely late-night television. <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of a uh, qualification there, but I'll take it. It, it was meant in a semi-nice way. Well, thank you. Uh, it is a... Uh, uh, if you have in your life uh, more than one wonderful experience, and I have had, including tonight, the, uh, <laughs> the uh, chance to work with somebody who was a truly wonderful man on and off screen, that man would have to be Jack Benny. He was as dear, as darling, and as wonderful to work with as you can hope for. And was, be... in, in all of, given all of that, was there ever a point where it was a little rockier than you might uh, hope for? Was there any, ever any friction with the man? Or Only on the several occasions when he fired me. <laughs> he uh, was dear. Yeah. And he was understanding, but he also was a major star. Sure. And on one occasion, we used to do our show live in front of people. Uh, he... Uh, obviously got mixed up in the phrasing of a line and he was quite capable of working his way out of that but uh, in this case I could see he was getting deeper and deeper into trouble so I said cut and uh, I walked out and he said uh, to the audience right away from, walked away from me and he said why did he say, why did he say cut and I in a uh, attempt to retain my job said well I thought there was a problem with the lines not you mr. Benny but the way the lines were written and he said did you feel that I couldn't work my way out of it and I said yes sir and he said in front of uh, 600 people well in that case you're fired no kidding yes and uh, how, how far along into the relationship with him was this was this uh... oh it was in the middle yeah I, as a matter of fact when I went home having been fired uh, there was an enormous uh, bouquet of flowers delivered to my mother and it said uh, please tell Fred to excuse me uh, I am nothing but a dreadful old man <laughs> actually what he said is I'm a dreadful old Jew but I can't say that yeah. on television <laughs> so uh, actually uh, that was one of the several occasions yeah. on which I was yeah. uh, fired no this dear th this was his uh, the, the half hour situation comedy the, right. the TV version of uh, the, the radio show that that's came right. before it. Yeah. that's right uh, uh, now you're in town for other than doing the show of course you have a little business to tend to I think the folks might like to no hear what other this is. real reason for being here is yeah. to be with you no but I am actually here because a, a kind of super agent a, a man who was legendary in the area of uh, literary talent, a man called Swifty Lazar, mm -hmm. said, uh, you're very old, and it's about <laughs> time that you wrote a book about the wonderful events of your life, and include such things as the, uh, what happened at the White House when you were uh, there for a state dinner. Now, and what, what did happen at the White House when you were there? Anything good? Would this be a good time to tell it? Well, I don't know. Let's I see. Now, you go into the publishers. You're looking to sell a book, right? I thought I was doing well without this help. <laughs> Uh, I thought I was doing fairly well without this help. <laughs> so you, you go in and you're trying to sell a book. So yes. now, now what, what do you pitch to them? The state dinner. There's got to be a great story about the state dinner. There is a fairly good story. Well, let's hear it. State. And that uh, in, you had mentioned that I directed Bedtime for Bonzo with the current president of the United States and said, uh, 
he had the major uh, state dinner, and then everybody walked out into various rooms, and Mr. Mr. Reagan was uh, involved with a number of people, and he said, oh, Fred, come on over here. And he said to these nice people who had no idea who I was, uh, this is the gentleman totally responsible for my being president of the United States. Mm -hmm. And they all said, well, I wonder who this uh, man is. And he said, he is the man who directed Bedtime for Bonzo. <laughs> and had he not directed me in that picture, I would still be in motion pictures and not in <laughs> politics. Uh, okay. What's, tell us about your day at The Tonight Show. What time do you roll in? One, two in the afternoon? No, sir. I roll in sometimes earlier than that. At uh, <laughs> 9.30, a quarter of 10. Yeah. And uh, we start with the usual wondering who in God's name is going to be on the show tonight. Is there any way we can get David Letterman? No, uh -huh. he's in New yeah. York. Uh -huh. And we do the best <laughs> we can in spite of that. Yeah. And uh, you, uh, you probably have been involved in the machinations of a chat show yourself. Yeah, we from time to time a little something may go askew. That's right. Yeah. But in ordinarily uh, you have uh, the uh, help of a major star, in my case Mr. Carson, Mr. Sands case, you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can call on most anybody <laughs> who will come on the show and you uh, sweat through the next 18 hours hoping the show will be uh, pleasant, uh, humorous, and incidentally, I think it is, it is a major asset to television when you took over this show. I thought what the... Oh, well, no, it's no, true. Friend. What this country needed was a bright, perceptive, totally impudent young man <laughs> in charge of the show. Wait a minute. Um, now, uh, of course, everybody wants to know something about John. Now, you are on the show. We've had... Uh, Ed, by the way, is Ed a discipline problem? Uh, not. <laughs> Ed is an absolutely delightful man, rather retiring, mm -hmm. and uh, totally uh, dedicated to his work on The Tonight Show, on Star Search, on Bungles, yeah, Beads, and whatever the other <laughs> show is. And, uh, and his current wife and grandchildren. Yeah. Okay, so now, and uh, Doc Severinsen is going to be on the show. What are the chances of having... Mr. Carson? Yeah. Mr. Carson doesn't like television. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> actually, the chances are nil. Yeah. But uh, if he went on for anybody, he would go on for you, David. He has an enormous regard for you, and so he should have. Uh, we did not discover you. You were discovered uh, er much earlier than than your appearances on The Tonight Show. But uh, since we often lie about whom we discovered, uh -huh. we have included you in the group oh, of thanks. people that we took from nowhere that. I appreciate and that. put up and That's very nice of you. Well, I must say that uh, without, without uh, your help and the help of the show, uh, none of this would have ever happened, and it's uh, a darn good of you to drop by. It was my pl Am I finished? Oh, you're done for I me. see. <laughs> Thank you very much. Fred DeCordova. We'll be right back with Paul Perdome.